Welcome everyone, it's Nicola Cairncross here. You're looking at a woman who's got the glow of someone who's done a job that she didn't really want to do. About me today? Because I've been to Halfords and I've sorted out a toleration. Yeah, remember my video about tolerations? I'll show that on the screen for you. It's all about how things niggle away at you and niggle away at you and take your energy. And one of the things that was niggling away at me was that my screen wash had run out in my car. In fact, I don't know if it ever had any, to be honest, because I've only just bought the car. It was basically getting harder and harder to get in the car and go places these frosty mornings. So I was thinking to myself, I really need one of those sprays that you can get rid of the uh, frost with. And then I need one of those scrapers that you can scrape the rest of it off with. And then I need one of those um, things that hold my phone on the dashboard. Because this is the magnetic thing that sticks on the dashboard. And it just dropped off the other day, and I think it's because of the cold. I think it stops the sticky stuff working. Um, so this is this is where sticky stuff should go, and it should go on the dashboard. And they didn't have any replacement sticky things, of course. So, but Halfords were very always very helpful. I've got to say, if when I do go there, I absolutely love it. Um, so I've got something called plate fix pads. And apparently you cut those up and you stick them on there and they work just as well. And these stick license plates on. So they're actually designed for the outside of the car. So they must be fairly weatherproof, hopefully. And so um, I actually don't get up very often, very early while it's still frosty like that on the car. But today I had to on a Monday morning as well. Ooh, shudder. And, and a friend gave me a tip. He said, take a bottle of warm water with you and pour it over the windscreen. And then the car heating will do the rest. Well, that was all very well. But what I'd forgotten was... I turned off the car heating last time I got in the car. So I was trundling along to Worthing thinking, why is this window screen not clearing as quickly as it could have done? And it turned out it was because I had the heater on cold, which is <laughs> a bit annoying. So I thought at that point when I realised that, that I ought to go to Halfords and get myself sorted out with a, um, a scraper, some spray, um, some screen wash with antifreeze in it, of course. And uh, what was the other thing I got? Oh, a um, now what are those suede pads called? Can't remember. Oh, the things you do the inside with. Because my hot breath, of course, when I get into a cold car with a cold windscreen, get loads of condensation on it. So needed something to clean the ins inside windscreen as well. Why am I telling you all this? No reason at all, except that it's an intro to what I'm going to be telling you about. Because on the way back, I was listening to one of my favourite YouTubers, because yes, of course, you can use YouTube like a, a listening device as well. He mentioned being famous to a few. In fact, I was watching his um, YouTube videos right from the very beginning. I'm on number 15 now. And he was saying that his viewers had gone up into double digits, which I think he meant that he was up in the 10 to 20, 30 bracket. And when you think about it now, he's got 21,000 subscribers and each video gets thousands and thousands of um, views. So I was quite encouraged to hear that. But it is a good concept, the famous to a few concept. And I'll tell you the reason why is because if you can get just a few people knowing who you are, what you do and what you can do for them, then you're starting to build a business. And of course, moving on from being famous to just a few. So, for example, when I, when I first started my first newsletter, which was on NicolaGairncross.com, I sent it out to my friends and family. And that was, I think the first one went out to 18 people and it ended up going out to 8,000 people in the end. And when I started the hotel, I had um, a, a whole get gang of people subscribing to my newsletter which I rebranded the diary of a seaside landlady when I bought the hotel and so there was not only um, 8,000 potential customers for the hotel there there was people who were members of my money gym who were going to come and stay at the workshops and things just thinking back to a video I made recently which was um, your business vision to getting traction meaning moving from your business vision to getting traction with your business um, I talked in that about the concept of the 100 customer list or 100 client list. And it's really important when you're doing your business plan that you can Im immediately identify where you're going to find your first 100 customers. Now, those 100 customers or clients might not end up being your final group of customers or clients. And you might not even stay with the same kind of group of customers or clients. But uh, if, you, if, you, if you've got somewhere to start, that will get you off and running. And then when I bought the hotel, I thought, how can I find out who stayed here before? And lo and behold, when we were clearing out the owner's, um, the owner's flat at the top, where they'd taken all their furniture and everything, they'd left me the guest book. Now, they'd been there for 14 odd years and people had signed the guest book 
with, get ready, names and addresses. Oh my God, I was so excited when I found that book, I can't tell you. Obviously, nobody had an email address, which was jolly annoying, but I had to sit and think about how I could get in touch with those people. And there were a couple of thousand of them. So what I did was I took the book to a local PA, a sort of freelance PA who I knew from my local chamber, and she sat and typed every single one of those names and addresses up. And it took her about a week and she put them into a database for me. And then what I did with the database was I got a load of postcards made with pictures of the hotel having been refurbished. I got a load of address labels printed from the database she created. And I got, um, because I couldn't get the postcards printed easily or in inexpensively, I got a load of labels, bigger labels made to stick onto the other side of the postcards. And the label said something along the lines of, um, Dear Acacia guest, you've stayed with us in the past and we just wanted to let you know that we've refurbished the hotel. I think there was some sort of competition. So it was, I uh, can't remember what the competition was. That's annoying, isn't it? But basically it was something along the lines of winner weekend at the Acacia if you do this. Ah, I know, it must have been something to do with going to the website and putting their email address in because that's what I wanted to do was build the email list up first. And I, th I think I might have done a draw for the first three months so that every t every um, month I pulled out someone's name and an uh, email that had put their email address in and they won a weekend at the Acacia for free. Well, you know, I had a hotel. I was em it was empty at that moment. <laughs> I had no problems with giving away free weekends, I can tell you. That was how I found my first 100 customers for the Acacia. And they did eventually obviously turn into thousands of customers. The other thing I did with the Acacia was I identified there was a lot of people in Worthing who were coming down to visit head offices. We had a lot of insurance head offices and financial institutions and Lloyd's had their head office in Worthing at the time, excess insurance, people like that. And there were lots of um, industrial parks around. So what I did was, first of all, I started with the insurance companies. I went through them all. I rang them all up and said, who deals with booking accommodation? Um, and they said, we basically, the top management, we book it for them. Everybody else books themselves, but we would happily put one of your postcards on our notice board. So I sent out my, my postcards. The thing about the postcards, let's just backtrack for a little bit. Because I knew that the guest book, the names and addresses were going to be out of date, a lot of them. But I knew that there would still be people living in the houses. Didn't want it to be just a letter because I wanted pictures on it. But also I didn't want it to be something in an envelope because I didn't want it to be a thing where the new um, owner or tenant threw the envelope away. I wanted it to be, it to be something that was um, bright, attractive, colourful, lots of pictures and that the new person might think, oh, well, you know, those people have moved on, but I, I like the look of that place. So I'll put my email in just to see if I win the free weekend. So that's that was my thinking on doing postcards rather than letters. And you'd be surprised how inexpensive it was. I used my local um, pronto print, I think, or someone like that to create the postcards for me. It was really very easy and inexpensive. It was a bit of a long weekend. I think I had to get the kids helping me with sticking the stamps on, sticking the address labels on, sticking the little message on the opposite side. But coming back to what else I did, I went I went to my local chamber of commerce and I said, do you have lists of the people, the businesses on the business parks? And lo and behold, they did. So as businesses quite freely publish their names and addresses, um, they want people to know where they are after all, it was really quite an easy job to put together a list of potential people who would have people coming down to see them and who might want to stay at the Acacia. That was the name of the hotel. What else? I knew that um, also people were coming to visit all the public schools. So I made sure I contacted the public schools and the, um, is it bursars or something they have in public schools that take care of all that stuff? Anyway, I really did. I sat down and I just brainstormed all the different kinds of customers where I could contact them in batches. That was the thing. It's not about one to one contact. It's about trying to find your 100 first customers. And what do you do when you've got your first 100 customers nailed? You go after your 1,000 true fans, as Seth Godin once put it. He, I think he write, wrote a book called 1,000 True Fans. And it was all about how to get to 1,000 people who know who you are, what you do, and what you can do for them. And there's a little bit of a happy ending to this story because I was sitting there looking at my poop-themed 
video that I sent out yesterday. <laughs> if you haven't seen that one, you might well want to go and watch it because I'm going to be changing the thumbnail shortly. It didn't do very well on YouTube at all. Um, I thought it was a brilliant thumbnail, but there you go. I'll, I'll flash it up here for you so you know what I'm talking about. But I think I'm going to have to change it because it's not getting the click-throughs that some of my others have done. So perhaps it's a little low rent even for YouTube. <laughs> so, um, but I was so I was sitting there thinking a bit moody and a little bit uh, about my, you know, my thumbnail not performing as well as I thought it would. So I went and did the thing that we all do when we want to distract ourselves, which is look at my emails. And I looked at my emails and I found out that not only was there someone in there inquiring about business consultancy with me, but there was someone in there saying that they were willing to have me do a public review of their website and also come on a free marketing call. So I was feeling very much more encouraged after that. And it just goes to show that however many videos I'm in now, how many am I up to? Up to? Let's have a look. Yeah, I've done about 60 so far because I've not quite done one a day, but I've been sticking as close to that as I can. So basically it's starting to get results. In the first 30 to 40 videos I put out, I attracted a new customer for Clicks and Leads Academy. And now I'm starting to attract other people who are willing to uh, submit to a website review or a live marketing consultation. And um, also someone who wants a business consultation. So that's really cool. I'm really encouraged and I'm encouraged even more to go and change that thumbnail. In conclusion, what can you do if your business isn't doing as well as you'd like it to right now? I think the thing, or if you're a new business, in fact, I think the thing to do is, is to think generally about your business and which target market you've targeted first and think how you can become famous to a few in that target market, how you can get to your top 100 customers easily and quickly, ideally working in batches rather than one to one, and then think even further about how you can become famous to a thousand people and then create a thousand true fans, as Seth Godin would call it. I think the thing has got to be creating content. It just creates so much more um, connection with people. I've, I'm hearing from all sorts of people that I haven't seen for 20 odd years, people who first came to the Money Gym workshops when I was holding them at the hotel, which was absolutely amazing. Lovely to hear from people like that. Become famous to a few, line up your first 100 customers and then create a thousand true fans and your business should fly. I'll see you tomorrow.